All right. Okay, so hello everyone who is on the Zoom call. I don't know how many people are on the YouTube stream, but welcome to Talk CSS number 56. It's our five year anniversary, fifth birthday. It's also our wind down edition. I'll probably talk a bit more like at the end of it. Uh, um, but so anyway, party hat time. So this is, uh, it's been five years. Um, I know some people are probably here for the first time and, and there are some of you who have actually sat through our shenanigans for five years. So this is uh, kind of nice. Uh, we have some social media presence. So we are at Singapore CSS on Twitter. You can use the hashtag TalkCSS. I say, I've said this for five years, but nobody actually uses the hashtag other than me. So we shall move on. Next. Oh my god, my next button's not working. Uh, yeah, so our website has not changed in five years. I'm still hosted on GitHub because my operating budget is zero. Uh, SingaporeCSS.github.io for a record of every single talk CSS uh, ever. So, you know, for nostalgia reasons. We also have a code of conduct. Uh, Regardless of whether this is an online or in-person meetup, we do not tolerate harassment of participants in any form. Uh, I will invoke the power of Akong to kick you out of this Zoom meeting. We also have a full version of the COC on our GitHub. Of course, the shoutouts, uh, we would not have any of these video things if it wasn't for engineers.sg who has been with us since day one. So once again, we want to thank engineers.sg as we have always done every month for five years without you there will be much less of us um, of course we also want to shout out uh, Chion uh, for those of you who have never been to any of our meetups uh, Chion surname Lim uh, he is a sweat king of Singapore uh, if you have any questions about uh, creating swag for your event company event meetup whatever uh, he has the most comprehensive knowledge in this in this area, he also printed the very first batch of Singapore CSS stickers for us, so he will forever be immortalized in our shoutouts. Like meetups also have friends, so our sister meetup is Singapore JS, still going strong. Uh, they are usually in the middle of the month, so check out their GitHub repository for details. Uh, our best friend meetup is uh, React Knowledgeable. They have also gone through a format change uh, over the past couple of months. And so they will eventually come out of hiding and probably do a community event sometime in the future. So stay tuned for that. Post of the month, as it has been for the entirety of 2020, is the interwebs brought to you by the internet. So uh, this month's CSS color of the month is Rebecca Purple. And Rebecca Purple is the 148th color to be added to the CSS named colors list. Uh, it is a very, very special color and it's also a very somber one. And, and I held off using it as our CSS color of the month for all these years uh, because it never really felt right until now, uh, especially because there is a link to our speaker this evening, Eric Meyer. Uh, I had been aware of the story behind this color from when it first came about back in 2014, because I was already like working uh, on the web since then. And, and Jeffrey Zeltman wrote a blog post titled The Color Purple. Um, eventually I realized that not many people who, who, who were, like most people who weren't like, e e extremely involved in CSS, actually didn't really know the story uh, behind this color. Uh, so I'm just gonna share, share, share the story behind Rebecca Purple. Um, so uh, Rebecca Allison Meyer had lost her fight against cancer 12 hours after her sixth birthday back in 2014. And to honor Eric Meyer's prolific work on CSS, it was proposed that the hex color 663399 be aliased to Becca Purple. Now, Eric Meyer only had one request if the proposal went through, and it was that the color be called 
Rebecca Purple instead. Because Rebecca had told them that she was about to be a big girl of six years old and Becca was a baby name. So once she turned six, she wanted to be called Rebecca. And she made it to six years old. And so Rebecca it is and Rebecca it must be. Uh, this proposal was approved uh, on the 21st of June in 2014 and it was added to CSS Color Level 4. For those of you who are interested in where in the spec that it is. Um, so yes, yeah, a very special color. And uh, we also have a, for our, a very esteemed special speaker who is closing off Talk CSS with us tonight also. Uh, so the agenda is like as usual, uh, has not changed. Uh, you all have to sit through me talking about HTML and CSS news of the month for about like 10-15 minutes. Uh, then Eric will come on with his talk designing in the background and we'll close off with Daniel. Uh, we'll talk about the is and where uh, pseudo selectors. So let's move on to news. Ha -ha. My, uh, personal, my personal favorite. Okay, I'm just going to assume you all can read the screen. Uh, browser updates. Um, Firefox is on a four-week cycle, so it's 82 now. And uh, let's see what's interesting. Uh, okay, input type color now, keyboard accessible. That's great. Uh, oh, this. Let's talk about file selector button pseudo element. And um, so it represents the file selection button. If you're using input type file, that means you can target and because it's a button, right? Like you, you can style it specifically to uh, look different from the rest of your your buttons. Uh, if it's for file file upload, so that's kind of nice. Just use this pseudo element. And is and where I'm gonna reserve for Daniel to talk about this. So this is like highly relevant. Like thank you for cooperating with us, Firefox eighty two. I'm sure I'm sure they did this on purpose. Never mind. Moving on. Uh, Safari technology preview is the uh, I feel the underdog browser that I always like to uh, shout out every time we talk about this because they are on a if you're not on two week release cycle and how they do things is that everything that they push into Safari TP will eventually be in stable as and when they push out the iOS updates. So if you want to try out the latest and greatest in, in CSS, I highly recommend downloading a copy of Safari TP. So now we are at 115. Um, let's see. Okay, math style property. I don't know if Mare is on the call today, but like if he watches this, uh, anyway, shout out to Mare. Math style property is now shipped. So it's a property that indicates whether math ML equations should render with normal or compact type. Uh, math ML is like the math markup language. So as far as I'm concerned, I think Mari will probably be the most uh, interested in this. For the rest of you, you're like, e math. Never mind. Moving on. Uh, flow relative shorthand and offset properties. Uh, this is in one of the links I have at the bottom. Flow, flow relative shorthands is related to logical properties. So like instead of the top left, bottom right, we are doing like block start and inline start. So these, these are shorthands for uh, like margins, padding and border, etc. A uh, few bug fixes. So that's, that's for, for browsers. Uh, specifications had some movement last month. Um, so a bunch of specs got, got updated. Uh, as usual, I'm not going to tell you what, the, what, what was updated. I'm just going to tell you about the specs so that you can go and like find out more if you're interested. Uh, properties and values has a spec. Uh, this is actually quite relevant for the, those of you who are interested in Houdini uh, because this is the API for registering uh, new CSS properties. And so the, the working draft got updated last month. Um, box sizing level three and four working drafts uh, also got updated. So what's covered in this particular module is the uh, sizing properties with keywords for the extrinsic and intrinsic sizings. Um, level four is just a delta spec. So that's pretty interesting for those of you who are complaining that like, you know, my my layout keeps breaking at different widths. Well, CSS is developing more and more, uh, how should we put this? Uh, 
uh, dynamic ways for you to, to size your boxes. So stay tuned. Uh, Grid, had, Grid CR uh, updated. So I, I don't think there's anything very majorly uh, new. It's, I think it's mostly fixes. Uh, FYI, level 2 is just adding subgrid to, to the main green, grid spec. Uh, what's interesting is that level three working draft is is already around, and recently I think someone tweeted about it, so it got some uh publicity, so to speak. So of course, champion of CSS grid, uh, Rachel Andrew wrote about it uh, on Smashing Magazine. The gist of it, TLDR, is that level three is going to cover uh, native masonry layout. Uh, so something pretty interesting. Custom highlight API module. I actually didn't know this existed until fairly recently. Um, but it's the it's a highlighting of of uh, I think selected text. Yeah. Um, so that's that's something that's being worked on. If if you have to style this during your work, like the future looks bright for you. Let's put it that way. Um, box model is its own thing now. Uh, I mean, it used to be part of the larger spec, then they pulled it out and gave it its own module. So it's level three, and this is describes margin and, and padding properties. So that's what we have. Uh, math functions seem to have been shipping in Blink and WebKit, I think. So these math functions, in addition to count that I think is fairly uh, common these days, there's mean, max and clam um because i like to do responsive typography my first use case is like oh i can do this like a responsive typography thing without having to write a fairly complicated sas function uh, but what it does is like you can do you can tell the browser like what's the minimum width you want what's the maximum width you want more math functions i think uh really will increase the the, the ways that we can instruct how the browser wants to size your things. So, so this is a article that we can all go and check out. Lots of interesting articles this month. Uh, if you're subscribed to our newsletter, then you know uh, I'll send it to your inbox. Otherwise, just come to our GitHub repository and click on all these links, man. And okay, cool code pen time. This is not a code pen per se, la, but like. I'm a big fan of this this uh this let's call her a web developer designer. Uh but she's known for doing CSS portraits. It might blow up my browser, so yeah. So I've featured her work like many times, Diana Smith. Um so this is just her latest work. This is CSS, my friends, so please check it out. Uh can I go close this before my browser explodes. Um, and somehow the month of October, a lot of people were very inspired to build like CSS games. I think, I don't know, because uh, there's also the Halloween theme, right? So there's a game called You Must Build a Lighthouse. Oh no, what did I just do? Sorry. Uh, did I just stop sharing the screen? Let me, sorry. Zoom so difficult. Uh, yeah, so this is You Must Build a Lighthouse. It's a game that is built with radio buttons. So you can, you can, uh, you can see, see what it is. This is very, very cool. 100% CSS, no artificial colors or ingredients. So that was fun. Um, this also went slightly viral uh, on, on the Twitters. And I also like the comment of JS. No. Uh, so yes, this is a pure CSS game. Very fun, very interesting. Uh, do check it out. It's like one of those adventure games, so I really like this vibe. So that's it. That's it. Uh, that's it for me. I'm going to hand over to Eric. So I'm stop sharing my screen now. 